Hello, hello, and welcome back, or welcome to my channel. I'm Anna Mae, and today I'm going to be making, or attempting to make, a classic shared top dress using regular elastic. If you're someone like me who likes the classic, kind of preppy style, you've absolutely seen the Hill House nap dress. Um, I'm obsessed with them, and I definitely did try and get my hands on one, and then the one I wanted was out of stock, so that just sucks for me. As a person who generally with clothing is hard to fit, shearing an elastic is my best friend. I'm a big fan of shearing, and I have quite a few shared items already in my wardrobe. So the nap dress just seemed like the perfect combination of those things, but alas, it was not meant to be this time. If you follow me on Instagram over at Anime by Design or even MK Needlepoint, you might have seen that I've been sewing a lot more recently. Just, I've talked about it a couple times, I won't go into the end, this, this phase of my life, I have time to do it. So I've been thinking about doing, I thought I would do like a little shared top or I did consider a dress, um, but I just couldn't find the right fabric until a couple weeks ago I was at the fabric counter in Dublin. I will link it down, link their website down below. And I came across this beautiful Ecotex cotton. And I was like, this, this is the one for me. So today I'm going to be making a shared top dress out of this particular fabric. So it's a pretty heavy cotton. Like it, it is heavy enough. Um, I believe some of the nap dress <laughs> pins, I believe some of the nap dress uh, fabrics are very, very lightweight, which is lovely if that's what you are looking for. Um, although I do love the nap dress, I am going for a slightly different style with my own. Um, I'm also basing it off of a dress that I wear all the time. And if, again, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen it. Um, I don't know if I post pictures of it as much as I wear it, but I have a black and white gingham shirt top dress from, that's like a midi length from Hollister that I love. So I've also kind of taken the measurements from that to give myself a good idea of what I need because it fits me so well. As you can see, I haven't even taken scissors to this fabric yet, but I've done a little bit of pre-planning. So I've watched a lot of other videos um, of people who have made shared dresses in the same style. It's because it's a very common and popular like beginner project before the nap dress. The difference is all of those used sharing elastic. So I, you can see this sewing machine here. I love this machine dearly. I have no bad words to say about it, but I could not for the life of me figure out how to use sharing elastic with it. It was just not working. So I took a spare piece of elastic, just some quarter inch, really inexpensive elastic. Um, it's like 35 cents a yard or like a meter, I think, um, is what I got this for. That's why I have so I have multiple bundles of it. And um, I decided to see if I could get the same effect that I wanted with that and I definitely could. So I decided that that's what I was going to do. I wasn't going to make my life difficult. So this tutorial or just this like walkthrough video, because um, usually I start a project, realize I should film this, start filming it and then have to do a talk through at the end. So I'll link some of my other sewing projects. Um, but this one, you're doing it with me. So that's what kind of makes this different to other videos that you might see is that I'm using regular elastic and not sharing elastic. This fabric is already quite heavy, or not heavy, but it is thicker than a lot of the other um, fabrics I've seen for sale um, as already made up dresses. But I think one thing that this could help with, um, the actual elastic, so it's going to be very well camouflaged in this dress, but I also feel like it might give a little bit more coverage because a benefit of the nap dress is that you don't have to wear a bra with it um, a lot of the time. And depending on your build, you might want a bit more support. And I feel like this kind of elastic might give more support. That's what I'm hoping. We'll see how it goes. So I've been planning on making this dress for quite a while. I had the idea in my head. And I, as I said, I was looking for fabric. And um, I just wasn't, obviously didn't make the calculations quite right. I didn't realize just how much fabric I needed for a dress like this. Even though I'm doing a short one, it just requires a lot of fabric. My intention was to do the classic double your bust measurement and have two panels of that. 
by the length that you want the dress to be. But that's not going to work for me because I don't have enough fabric. And you might say, Anime, go buy more fabric. But I don't want to. I want to use what I have and I'm obsessed with this fabric. So it's just going to have to work. When you see it laid out, I'll insert an overlay. <laughs> it's, it, it looks like so much fabric and I'm not that big of a person so I'm really confused as to <laughs> why it wouldn't work but um, basically I believe I have about three meters of fabric um, and it is not enough for someone with a 36 bust. That said the doubling rule is kind of a rule of thumb and I think it can be changed. I have also seen videos where people have just used 1.5 times so I am just going to be using the width of my fabric. Um, my fabric is a classic like 145 centimeters wide. Um, I don't know what that is in inches, I think it's around 59 inches. Um, so I'm just going to be using that as the width. I would be looking for 72. We'll see how it works. I mean there's always the stitch ripper. So as I said the traditional or the classic is double your bus measurement um, and that's not going to work for me but the length is still going to be the same. I'm afraid to put scissors to fabric because I do love this fabric so much but I've in the last 10 minutes I, over, I actually only realized since I filmed the intro to this video um, that I do not technically have enough fabric but I am still going to roll with it. So this is going to be a learning experience for all of us. I will insert clips of me cutting the fabric and I will overlay the measurements that I decided to go with in the end. Um, as I said, I'm just using the width of the fabric because that's really all I can do. And I'm really hoping this works out because it could look so pretty. But anyways, it's not gonna happen unless I actually cut into the fabric, so let's get going. Okay, so I just, uh, I could say cut, but I didn't. I ended up just ripping the fabric because I was just doing straight across lines and at least it's on the grain that way. The first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hem, I'm gonna decide what's the top and what's the bottom of both pieces, kind of mark that with a piece of chalk, and then I'm going to hem the top. And actually what I need to do is thread the bobbin and get all of that stuff ready. I need to find the thread I'm using. Hopefully one spool will be enough because there is a lot of stitching to do. I know that the shearing and elastic is gonna take a long time, but it's that's just how it is. I was trying to keep the super messy and ugly green couch in the background, but that's not gonna happen. So I have just hemmed this. As you can see, I was giving it like a, a nice good chunk because this is going to kind of ruffle up and it might be quite visible. So and because the inside of the fabric is light, I wanted it to not show. So I'm gonna go press that and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna get started on the elastic and the lengths that I'm going to cut the elastic and all of that sort of situation which is the scary part of this so I'll be back I'm not going to show you pressing them because that's boring so I'm done pressing this the neckline and I've been thinking about this for a couple of minutes now and I started and I cut a couple strips um that were like just slightly larger than the like flat measurement of the gingham dress that I've been talking about that I really like the fit of and I don't think that's gonna work so I've accidentally cut quite a few strips but thankfully I bought a crap ton of this quarter inch elastic and what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew using obviously a zigzag stitch once I get to that point but we're not there just yet but I'm going to sew this quarter inch elastic like fully stretched to the fabric. Th that's the only real way I'm thinking of doing this because with with all of the other 
was going to say recipes, patterns and, and things I've seen for this, it's always with sharing elastic. So you just stitch away and it just kind of shrinks down. So I'm not so sure what to do. And because my measurement isn't also the exact half, or sorry, the exact double, I'm not so sure. So that's what we're gonna roll with first. So that said, I think I should probably draw some straight lines on first, but at the same time, I don't know, because I'm actually using a physical item, I think that's going to allow me to sew straight lines easier. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I, well, I, yeah, I'm not actually so sure about that, but I'm not, I don't think that drawing straight lines is really gonna help me on this. If I was doing um, something I actually plan on, if this works out, doing a top in this beautiful madras fabric, um, because those lines are so straight, I would use those as a guide, but because this is like floral and trellis-y, I just don't think it's necessary. So I think I'm actually gonna just start stitching, um, which is typically, a you know, a phrase that is always the beginning of the end. So uh, I am just going to start stitching and I'm gonna do the first row and I know that the more elastic you add, typically the smaller something shrinks down. Um, so, you know, there's that. And then you also hit it with steam. Anyways, we'll get to that when we get to that. But for now, um, I'm going to disregard the little strips that I cut and I'm just going to sew the elastic on as it goes on, um, I'm going to switch my machine to a zigzag stitch because I'm pretty sure that's how you're supposed to sew on elastic like this. When I was doing test patches, I was actually just using a regular straight stitch, but I'm going to use zigzag because actually printed on this elastic is a little zigzag, which I think is kind of cute. Um, but it's also probably to indicate use a zigzag stitch. So, so I'm going to take my instructions from this elastic and. Um, This is scary, but, you know, it's happening. So I'm not bothered to adjust the angle of the camera, but uh, I, it cut me off. But I don't know how much it got, but that definitely worked. So I ended up changing, again, I don't know how much the camera caught, but I ended up changing the stitch length, making the stitch longer, but more narrow, um, because it's not gonna be that visible, like the, the fact that I changed it so much, um, and just trying to figure out what was working. So I just had the elastic fully stretched as I sewed. Um, I think it's gonna be, um, yeah, like way too big. So I don't really know what to do with that information. I think I'm going to keep sewing and attaching the elastic and I will see if it helps it shrink down a bit more because I've seen that in a lot of the videos that like the more I and I don't know if that's maybe just with the sharing elastic and um, that it like basically shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and then you hit it with the steam and it really helps the fabric to shrink down but I feel like this is not going to probably shrink down that much more and I might end up having to like take it in a lot at the sides or I will figure it out, which is annoying given that I was freaking out about not having enough fabric when clearly I do. So um, I'm going to sew a couple more rows of this. Um, I need to obviously trim the elastic here and I'm going right from edge to edge but I think I'm going to do it pretty narrow. I'm going to maybe like leave a quarter inch in between. Sorry, I was out of frame there. <laughs> in between um, each of these. So like almost like one skip one, one look like in the inside. Um, and we'll see how it goes, but this is annoying. But I guess I'm just gonna have to try and figure it out. So an update. Um, it did not shrink any further but it is looking a lot more shared. Like it's it's a really tight, I was gonna say neat, it's not neat, but um, it's not really gonna come across on camera very well. Um, but it is very much shared, but it's like tight. Um, I think it's just cause the fabric's so thick, it kind of feels thick. Um, and it like, I mean, it doesn't look bad. It, it actually looks pretty cute, but 
it's not shrinking down at all. I've clipped it around myself and um, it like one panel's gonna work. So <laughs> I'm going to continue sharing it and see how it goes. But I think, cause it like, it goes across the widest part of my bust right now as well. So what I'm thinking right now is that I'm going to just have like one seam down the back, which I know, don't at me. That's like, oh no, I just see a bug. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You do not live here. He's gone. Um, yeah, I know it's like really, not taboo, like really not a, not the thing to do, to just have a single seam down the back. But this is a dress for me, so I don't care. And it's not going to be that visible because it's very printed, it's a dark fabric. I don't care. Honestly, I don't care. So, um, so much for all of that panic of not having enough fabric. Uh, I'm going to need to do some like calculations and Maybe if you can have a good idea as to like how much it shrinks and stuff like that, let me know. Yeah, I'm gonna keep going for now. I don't know how many more rows of elastic it's gonna take me. Um, this is three. I'm gonna take, say, at least five more, which is a lot. Um, it is getting more difficult to stitch it, as you can probably see. You, yeah, the stitches just look dreadful at the back. Um, because it kind of gets caught in the machine and everything. I need, it's basically, I need like a third hand. I'm pulling the fabric taut, the elastic, even more taut than the fabric, um, because I'm not trying to like warp the fabric either. And then I have to use the other hand now to like continue feeding the fabric through the machine because the presser foot is not able to scoot it along at the level that it needs to. So that's really fun. The stitch length is at a four and the like zigzag is at a three and I'm liking that as the like settings the most. I would love to get this done today. So um, I'm wrapping it up for today because it's like just after 5 p.m. Um, I've been like busy doing a bunch of different things today and I have had enough. I've kind of figured out a way to make sewing the elastic easier in the last five minutes. And then the bobbin ran out and I was like, you know what? Mm. I've had enough. Um, I underestimated how many strips of elastic I was going to need to do. Um, I should have spaced them out a little bit more but again it's just really difficult because I'm trying to stretch it with one hand and stretch the fabric out with the other but then I need to feed it through. I think I already said that. I will be trying to figure out um, how to make the sharing elastic work in future because this is just not something I can maintain. Um, it does like it it does feel really thick and nice and I think the sharing elastic I had was just really weak and that's what I didn't like so you know I think it's just a learning experience um also I underestimated how much I was go I think I was going off other people's measurements for their bust and I wasn't thinking that I might have bigger boobs than these people um so basically I need to extend it by like two inches um so I have a, like a lot of it done now so this is just one of the panels so here is me freaking out because I didn't have enough fabric but um yeah the bobbin ran out like midway through and I just like gave up so this is it let me just clip it at the back if I can um or no I'm not going to I'll just hold it at the back but basically it comfortably like it's tight but it fits like just one panel so I'm pretty sure that's what I'm gonna do like the sharing is pretty stretched out but it means it's quite like nice and snug um so I'm going to do that I think I'm just gonna make the dress out of one panel actually I don't know if it's gonna close the whole way around me that might be a problem I also have very wide hips so maybe that won't actually work I guess we'll have to see um I'll try and wrap it around this way and see but yeah, we're gonna call it a day and um, that's fine, that's enough fabric. So um, yeah, I still need to do maybe two, two I, I want to say two, three more rows because I just want, I, it needs to come like under, which it hasn't done yet. So obviously you can tell by my bun and greasy face that I've had enough for today. 
So we will resume tomorrow and uh, hopefully get a cute dress done. So it's I think about two days later. Um, well, just a day later. I didn't sew yesterday um, and I have the dress here. So I have progressed a little bit from when I said I was completely giving up. I decided to not fully, fully give up at that point. After I took a shower and worked out and all that sort of stuff, I was like, you know what, I'll just keep sewing. So I did. And I just wanted to get the elastic done. So it is such a mess. Uh, I would not recommend doing this method. Um, I mean, like you can try, but I would not recommend it. Um, I, my phone was going off. Um, I think that there's gonna be a way I could figure out how to use sharing elastic and that would be better. But the very messy sharing looks like this now. So it's a pretty decent, I think it's about seven and a half inches um, from the top edge to the bottom, like to the last piece of elastic. And yeah, I'm gonna try and just sew this panel closed and use this single panel as the dress. It's gonna give quite a small skirt, but that's fine. Um, it would be nice if it was a little bit puffier, but I think if I was to make this again, um, I would just use different, like this fabric is also way heavier than I think would be advised. I would be using sharing elastic, um, everything like that, and I would probably do a longer one, but this is supposed to be a short dress. Then for the sleeves or the straps, I um, I think it was four inches. Let me get a general. Yeah, so I cut four inch strips from the main fabric. Um, I wish I could tell you how long they were. I think that just kind of depends on the person actually. Um, but I ended up doing three, I obviously turned in the edges, um, which makes them about, I think about three, about two and a half inches wide-ish. Yeah, about two and a half, mm, yeah. About two and a half inches wide and I did three pieces of elastic, again, shared on these. And these, I did not use a zigzag stitch. I just use a straight stitch and it works just fine. So that's also a time and energy saver. So right now, the camera battery just started to flash at me, which is not the best. Um, and there's people here painting the house, so I can't really like do that many try-ons because there's no blinds in here. Um, but I'm going to stitch this closed. Uh, I was gonna do French seams, but I'm not because it's gonna create way too much bulk. Um, I'm just going to sew it closed if I can and then try it on, see if it's in any way working, if it's going to work as a dress or if I'm going to have to turn it into a top and then I will hand sew on the straps because I don't want machine stitches um, on those. So that's the update, that's what's happening. I haven't hemmed the bottom yet because I wanted to like see how long it was and everything. I also have like no thread so that's so fun, I love that. So it fits. Um, it is pretty tight. So I think the fabric is lovely. There is enough room in the skirt. I still have pants on, by the way. I just have it on here. That's how long it is. So I actually didn't have it and I'm glad because I want it to be quite a bit shorter than this. The straps obviously still need to go on, so. I just threw it on over what I already, I just, see, okay, so I think it's going to look a lot better with the straps, the bra strap. I think that is really cute. It is tight. I mean, it's pretty cute, but I don't feel like finishing it today. I just wanted to stitch up the back. I want to get my mom's opinion, and she's not here right now, and she won't be for another day or two, so... I'm gonna wait it out, but I think this turned out pretty well. I mean, it it does generally fit. It could do with some pockets, and it was probably going to have pockets if it was the original plan of two panels, but I mean, it looks pretty cute, I think. Ta-da! <laughs> so, it has been actually about two weeks since I think I filmed the last clips. I just hemmed this dress yesterday and ironed it this morning, and 
it is officially a complete garment. I'll insert um, clips of me like standing up and actually wearing it. So I did finish it to a kind of midi length when I tried it on and I talked to my mom about it. Just decided to keep it on a midi length um, just because it's more comfortable and so I'm not losing as much fabric. Um, you know, I was doing this as an experiment to see how it would work doing sharing with regular elastic and what I can tell you from this experience is to not do that. Um, I will definitely be working on figuring out how to use sharing elastic in my machine because I will not be doing this again. Um, the top of this dress is like a sports bra, like a high compression sports bra to the extent that I am actually wearing a regular bra underneath it because without it, it is like, like just, it's a disappearing act. I got up, that's the only way I can put it. And with the strapless bra, it just, it's way too cleavagey. Like it just doesn't work. So that's a bit disappointing. Um, that is obviously just because I was freewheeling this whole thing. But overall, I do think it turned out really cute. As I said, I'm gonna insert some clips over this. Um, so the straps, I think, turned out really well. I really like the width of them. And um, I just like how they sit and everything. The bust area is definitely the most problematic area. Also, like, the skirt isn't very big. That is because I'm obviously only using half the fabric I thought I was going to use. Um, the bust, I think it was like seven and a half inches. I have it, I say it at some point earlier in this video. Um, that is not enough for me. I definitely need at least another inch of length for full coverage and that's part of the problem with um, not wearing a bra with this dress. As you can see, like it's pretty low and that's just so it can come under my bust. So that is obviously just depending on you and your build. Um, and yeah, just how you're built. It does fit pretty well otherwise, like it's not uncomfortable. Uh, I also did intend on putting pockets in the original one, which I can't do in this because it's just one large piece of fabric. Um, but still, it's a wearable dress. I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and that's only because I adore this fabric. Um, I still have some of this fabric left, but it is cut. So I'm going to figure out what I'm gonna do with it. If you are doing this, I would suggest not to use regular elastic and to really try and figure out how to use sharing elastic um, because it's just, it is way too compressive to use regular elastic. Um, hitting the sharing part with steam is really important to make it look good. Um, I will also say, I'll insert clips of what the inside of this looks like. It is absolutely cat. It is so terrible looking. It, and it, it's fine from the outside, you know, like it, it's good enough, but um, it's definitely one of the messiest garments I've made. Um, so yeah, and also using a more lightweight fabric. Um, I realize that most of the more shared pieces I have in my wardrobe are made out of viscose um, or that type of a softer fabric. Uh, cotton's fine, but this is quite a thick cotton, so that didn't really work. But that is it. I did my little dress, kind of like a nap dress DIY. Um, I mentioned earlier that I was unable to get a nap dress before and then I didn't like the new ones and blah blah blah, but they're re-releasing the ones that I wanted, so follow me on Instagram for <laughs> some hopeful nap dress content as I will be competing for a nap dress in the next release. Um, it won't be this style though, it's one of the other styles. But like overall I'm happy with how it turned out. So, um, you know, I did it, it's done and it's wearable, but I would not recommend doing this. So I hope that this um, was a learning experience for you. Uh, it taught you something and it taught you not to do what I did. So if you enjoyed this video, want to see more sewing videos, more lifestyle type videos, subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Instagram at Anime by Design. I'm always posting on there, especially smaller sewing projects. And I will see you in my next video.